So maybe you've lost your wallet in Walt Disney World, or I don't know, your kid. Yeah, it happens all the time. Things like car trouble in Disney World, or you're running late for an advanced dining reservation. Today on DFB Guide, we've got tips you didn't know you needed to know. So settle in, here we go. everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we I love this video, you guys. This is so, so important. We are covering a bunch of stuff that you didn't even realize you needed to know. This is kind of an addendum to our what to do when things go wrong in Disney World <laughs> video, although this isn't all about things going wrong. It's stuff that either a lot of people encounter in Disney World or that you absolutely will have to figure out before you go on your trip, so here we go. First one is finding lost parents. And I'm not crazy, that's how Disney World actually refers to it, because that's the way that Disney likes to frame it, that the parents are lost and not the kids. It makes it much less scary for the children. So if you're a parent, the last thing you wanna have happen at Disney World is to look down and your kiddo is nowhere to be seen. Unfortunately, this one happens a lot more than any parent would like it to, so don't feel embarrassed. Disney World is huge and there's a lot going on, but luckily cast members do a great job of reuniting kids with their lost parents. First thing you need to know, cast members are super reassuring to kids and explain that they're not lost, their parents are lost. They say to them, well, we know where you are. You're right here with me. And then casually relay to a fellow cast member to make the call about that child. First, cast members will check the immediate area. They'll ask the child if they know their parents' names and if they can remember what they're wearing, what color their hair is, and things like that. If the cast member doesn't see the parents in a few minutes, they take the child to the baby care center in that park. So lost parents, you can find your kids probably at the baby care centers in the parks, watching cartoons, coloring, reading books, maybe having a nice drink or a snack and being well taken care of. So I'll say it again, it does happen all the time and it's usually resolved in minutes. So you should definitely be prepared before you go to Disney World just in case it happens to you. Here's what to tell your kids. Let them know if they get lost to find any person with that Disney name tag. So that oval name tag that says their name and where they're from. And be sure to show them that name tag on a cast member so they know what that looks like. So they know who to look for if this does happen. Another thing you can do to prepare, just in case you can write your contact info on their magic band if they're wearing it. Or maybe even use temporary tattoos with your phone number on them. Remember, it's probably not best to use the child's name as a temporary tattoo as that could be unsafe if a stranger calls them by their name. But that's up to you, mom and dad. So speaking of losing things, let's talk about how to find the stuff that you lose. Now, the reason I thought of doing this video in the first place is when I lost something in a minivan and I did not know how to get it back. I know I've mentioned it before on the channel. I didn't know how to get, I didn't know who to call. I didn't know where to go to get that thing back. So if you lose something in Disney World, first of all, if you lose an item in the parks, you can head to guest relations and they'll guide you through the lost item report. Also, there's a chance that someone may have just turned in your item and it could still be there. There, although more than likely you'll be filling out that lost item report. Next option, if you don't feel like heading to guest relations or if the guest relations line is super long like it was when I lost my thing in the minivan, you can access the report through the Disney World website or by heading directly to chargerback.com slash Disney World. That's the website they're gonna send you to anyway to fill out your lost item report. Now this is brand new to Disney World. It used to be that they just had a lost and found that you called and they sent your thing to you and now there's this whole process you have to go through on the website. And this same procedure applies if you've forgotten something in your resort room or anywhere else on Disney World property. Now, if you've forgotten something on the Magical Express bus before or after your vacation, you can call 866 866- 599-0951, see if you can resolve that situation. And here we go, if you left something in a minivan like me, the procedure for getting back a lost item is the same as it would be if you were in any Lyft ride share. So that means going to your ride history, selecting the ride you think you lost something on, and scrolling to the find lost item link. I wish I'd known about that, which I didn't. If it was recent, they'll let you contact the driver directly, and if it's been a little bit longer, you'll message Lyft support, and they will reach out to help you get the item back. They charge a $15 fee to deliver your lost item, which goes directly to the driver. 
or you can call the minivan team directly at 407-828-3500 to try to have the item retrieved. Now have the number of the minivan you rode in so that it's easier for them to search for the vehicle and your lost item. Next tips you didn't know you needed to know all about MCO Airport and getting to and from. So Orlando Airport is one of the 10 busiest airports in the country with over 47 million passengers traveling through Orlando each year. And MCO suggests you arrive at your airline ticket counter no later than two hours prior to your flight. Now note that security times at MCO are anywhere from five minutes to 45 minutes at kind of unconventional times of day compared to normal airports because of so many tourists. Now here Here's a little extra tip. If you can sign up for and become TSA PreCheck in your airport, that definitely helps. I am TSA PreCheck and I get through Orlando security probably within five minutes every single time I fly. So that definitely, definitely helps because most of the people flying through Orlando are not TSA PreCheck. And if you do get that qualification, it just means that they've done a background check on you and you've been deemed safe enough that you don't have to take off your shoes or take your computers out of your bag and you can just go through security without all of that extra stuff. Now, the airport has an app that tracks security wait times, so you can go ahead and download that ahead of time. That can be helpful so that you can plan your time. Now, if you're traveling from Disney World to the airport via the Magical Express, make sure you know when Magical Express will pick you up. Note that they pick you up three hours ahead of your flight, which is crazy, but they're going to go to multiple hotels. That's why they need to pick you up so early because they're gonna have multiple stops. And they'll still get you to the airport probably two hours before your flight, which is what MCO suggests. Remember, you can add Magical Express on when you make your resort reservation, or you can add Magical Express after you make your resort reservation by visiting the Disney World Airport transportation page or by calling 866-599-0951 or 407-939-1936. Now, if you prefer to take a minivan to the airport, this is more flexible timing, although they do recommend you get picked up two hours in advance. You can call 407-WDWPLAY, which is 939-7529, to arrange the ride up to six months in advance. So be sure to have your flight details and note that this trip can't be booked through the app at this time, and minivans run between 7 a.m. and midnight, so you've got to call to get your ride booked, and it's only between 7 a.m. and midnight. So one-way rides to the airport will cost $150, not including gratuity. Note that both Magical Express and minivans are only available for WDW Resort guests, and that doesn't include Swan and Dolphin or Good Neighbor Hotels. So if you're staying there, you can set up a traditional shuttle or taxi service through Mirrors or call a standard Lyft or Uber. Next up, how to deal with car trouble in Disney World. Another one we don't expect and hope it doesn't happen, but it definitely can. If you've brought your own car to Disney World, you should definitely know how to deal with car trouble or a lost vehicle. Believe it or not, it's pretty easy at Disney World. So the Car Care Center is right there in the middle of Disney World, right by Magic Kingdom, and it's great for rescuing you. It's located across from the Polynesian Resort, and you can reach them by calling 407-824-0976. They offer repair services and roadside assistance, including complimentary towing to the car care center or another close location if the center is closed. They also offer complimentary transportation to the resorts and theme parks so you can enjoy your day while your car gets fixed up. Now that's awesome. On that same note, if you have car trouble in a park, for example, if you can't remember where you parked, ask a parking cast member because they have a chart by time of arrival of where cars are parked. So if you remember what time you arrived, they should know exactly where you are. If you lock your keys in your car, flag down security and they will call a nearby locksmith. Or if your car won't start, flag down security again and they can help jump it and you can scoot to the car care center. Also note that the Car Care Center also has a rental car location. So if you need to rent a car just for a couple of days while you're in Disney World, you can do that at the Car Care Center. So really, car trouble in Disney World is a lot better than car trouble anywhere else. <laughs> that Car Care Center is pretty amazing. So what to do when you're running late? No matter how much you schedule and plan, you may end up running late at some point on your trip. So whether the family can't get it together to leave the room on time, you just missed the bus headed to Magic Kingdom, or there's no way you're making it all the way across Epcot for your Frozen Ever After Fast Pass. Believe me, I have been there a million times. Epcot, I keep thinking it's smaller than it is. It's really big. <laughs> Here's a few tips that can help you out. 
If you're running late for a fast pass, you can always check for a later time in your My Disney Experience app. It's super easy to change times in there, assuming they're available. And if you are going to miss your window, be sure to cancel or change your fast pass so that someone else can grab it. Everyone loves a last minute fast pass. Now, if you're just running a little bit late, there's actually an unofficial 15 minute grace period for fast passes, meaning you can show up to the attraction up to 15 minutes late and the Mickey should still turn green. You can also arrive about five minutes before your fast pass window opens and you should be okay. Now note that some people say that that grace period is a 10 minute grace period late and some people say 15 minutes, so really try to be no more than 10 minutes late. If you're outside of those windows, you can always talk to a cast member at the attraction. So depending on the circumstances and the cast member, they might be able to work a little magic for you. So let's talk meals. If you're late to a dinner reservation, again, talk to the cast member. Depending on the situation, they may be able to help you out. And always be nice. That should go without saying, but we get it. You're frustrated. And sometimes it's hard to stay nice when things are going wrong. But we promise you're more likely to have a better outcome if you're nice to the cast member. So if you're worried about making it to a dining reservation ahead of time, say you have little kids and you're not sure how long they'll last in the parks before they need a nap, you can avoid the Disney Advanced Dining Reservation Cancellation Policy which is 24 hours in advance, or you'll pay a fee of $10 per person by booking through opentable.com. Only a few Disney World restaurants are available on OpenTable, but there's a much more lenient cancellation policy. Just make sure you don't wait too long. If you have too many no-shows, OpenTable may close out your account. And note, if you're running late and need to get somewhere quickly, you can always use minivans, which are much faster than relying on free Disney transportation. They will cost you a bit to use, $15 plus a per mile rate, but driving times between a lot of the resorts and parks are pretty short. It's actually only about five minutes from Caribbean Beach Resort to the Epcot entrance, for example. All the minivan drivers are gonna be Disney World cast members, and all the cars are super clean and super nice. So there are a few of our favorite Disney World tips that you didn't even know you needed to know. Nobody expects to lose their kid in Disney World. Nobody expects to have their car break down in Disney World. But believe it or not, every one of these things has happened to us and we are sure that you're gonna have greater peace of mind knowing how to deal with these situations. Let us know in the comments what you've experienced. Have you had any of these things happen to you? What's been your personal experience? We can't wait to hear. Thanks for listening, you guys. Thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.